Hello, third graders. Welcome to lesson 10 of our solar system journey as we've been going through and discovering some fun things about the galaxies and the stars and the planets and all this good stuff. And I wanted to show you this real quick before we start the lesson. This is my solar system model. Well, the solar system model is more of the model to show you how the eclipses work or the um, solar eclipse and lunar eclipse work. And also just how the Earth is always rotating around the sun, as it were, like that. So, and how the moon is rotating around the Earth. So it's pretty neat. If you shine a light um, of the sun onto the Earth, it blocks out the shadow of the Earth, blocks out the moon. Or if you have it like this, where the shadow of the moon is blocked onto the Earth. It's pretty neat. Anyway, you'll learn, you've learned about solar eclipses and lunar eclipses already, so we're not going to go there again, but this is pretty cool. Anyway, okay, so let's jump in to our solar system lesson 10. This is the last lesson of this unit, so let's get started on it, and we'll start our next unit next week. Okay, Mae Jemison. Let's find out about her and talk about vocabulary words that are important for you to remember. Okay, aeronautics, applications, conducted, engineering, that's a big one. The study of work or using science, knowledge, and methods to solve problems in the world. International, to be among or between two or more nations or countries. Mission, a specific task or job that a person or team is set to perform. Awesome. All right, so what have we already learned? Well, we learned about the first astronauts to walk on the moon. We talked about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, how exciting their adventures were. Um, talking about the experience of traveling through space, how exciting that would be. Talked a lot about space. And then the word astronaut, all astronauts in the United States trained with NASA. That's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration which is an organization that was started to lead scientific research and exploration of outer space. It was NASA that coordinated Apollo 11's trip to the moon and other manned flights into space. Apollo 13 is a failed attempt to get to the moon. It's a, there's also a movie based on it that I recommend if your parents let you. Um, that's really good. Anyway, a lot of people work for NASA to support its many missions. A mission is a specific job or task that a person or team or a piece of equipment is set to perform. But you can send robots on missions. We have satellites in orbit right now. There are missions, so those kinds of things. Even now, um, with distance learning and everything, the people exploring Mars are even doing it from their own houses. Saw that on the news this morning. That was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> having to do all your, all your NASA space work from home at your own computer. That's, that's crazy. Anyways, think about other kinds of things that scientists and other workers at NASA would do to help astronauts on the spacecraft triumph in their missions. Okay. We're going to talk about Mae Jemison today. She was a famous astronaut who worked for NASA. Um, and we're going to talk about why she is important. We have taken an imaginary adventure into space in our special classroom spaceship. But how would you like to really travel into space. When Copernicus was born in the 1400s, space travel was an impossible dream. Copernicus didn't even have a telescope, let alone spacecraft. But thanks to careful observations, logical thinking, and bold ideas, Copernicus, many other scientists after him, today we live in an amazing time when dreams of space travel really can come true. Advancements or improvements in technology have been made for human beings to travel into space. Ever since Apollo 11 first landed on the moon in 1969, more and more astronauts have flown into space. Would you like to be one of them? Mae Jeminson's answer to that question was definitely yes. She dreamed about going into space from the time she was a little girl. When she grew up, that's exactly what she did. In 1992, Mae Jeminson blasted into space aboard the space shuttle Endeavour. She lived on the Endeavour for eight days and conducted or carried out many experiments while she was there. In these experiments, she carefully collected information about how weightlessness in space affects animals and humans. 
One of the experiments involved frog eggs. Jeminson wanted to see if they would develop into tadpoles normally while in orbit. May Jeminson was the first African-American woman ever to go into space. In fact, she was the first African-American female astronaut in the history of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. This is the space shuttle Endeavour in which she had traveled on. Pretty neat, huh? And here's the word National Aeronautics and Space Administration again. The word part aero means having to do with air and nautics is navigation. So navigating through the air and or also the science of flight. <laughs> How did Mae Jeminson make her childhood dreams of space travel come true? Part of the answer is that when she was young, she read a lot about things she was interested in. Jeminson was born in 1956 in Decatur, Alabama, but grew up in Chicago, Illinois. As a child, Jeminson was very interested in space. She was 12 years old when astronaut Neil Armstrong and his Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon. At age 14, Jeminson was still interested in space, so she read many adult books about astronomy. At the age of only 16, she graduated from high school, went to college at Stanford University in Stanford, California. Education was very important to Mae Jeminson. Education is also very important to NASA in choosing who will become an astronaut. While Jeminson was at Stanford University, she studied chemical engineering, which is the study of chemicals or substances and how they can be used to solve problems or make products. While she was at college, Jeminson also enjoyed theater, dancing, and playing football with her friends. She believed it was important to be a well-rounded person, which means to study and enjoy many different things. Jeminson graduated from the college, ugh, <laughs> graduated from college with a degree in chemical engineering and Afro-American studies. Plastic, by the way, is just one of the many materials that we can use every day developed through chemical engineering. If you really look into it, NASA is responsible for a lot of medical breakthroughs and other things that we use in everyday life, not just going through to space, but other things as well. Besides wanting to be an astronaut, May Jeminson also wanted to be a biomedical engineer, because, you know, astronauts are not enough. <laughs> biomedical engineers seek new ways to use technology to improve healthcare for people. When Jeminson graduated from college, she thought about applying right away to NASA to become an astronaut, but decided to go to medical school first. In medical school, she traveled around the world providing medical care to people living in developing countries. As a medical student, Jeminson traveled to Kenya in Africa, where she helped with people, with commu the community with different medicine projects in very difficult areas. An engineer is a person who uses knowledge and tools for engineering to solve problems. A developing country is a country where most people do not have a lot of money or resources. Many don't have all the basic things you need to live a healthy life, adequate food, healthcare, clean water, education. But I can imagine, you know, going down to Africa, I've, been, I've seen pictures of, of the villagers have to walk like a mile to get to fresh water and then carry the water in a bucket over their head. It's, and even then the water's not all that fresh. They've got to boil it. So some villages, it's not everybody, but there is definitely a lot of that going on around the world. Jemison also traveled to Thailand in Asia to care for refugees from Cambodia. After Jemison graduated from medical school, she worked for the Peace Corps for more than two years Peace Corps is a U.S. government organization that sends volunteers to assist people in developing countries. In the Peace Corps, Jemison was responsible for the health of Peace Corps volunteers working in West Africa. In 1985, May Jemison decided the time was right to pursue her dream of space travel. She applied to NASA to become an astronaut. But soon afterward, in January of 1986, NASA suffered a terrible tragedy in its space shuttle program. The space shuttle Challenger burst into flames a little over a minute after it was launched. After this tragedy, all astronaut applications, including Jeminson's, were postponed, meaning that NASA was not accepting any applications for new astronauts for that time. After NASA reopened the astronaut application program, Jeminson found out she was chosen to be an astronaut in 1987. In 1992, after completing her space shuttle mission aboard Endeavour, Jeminson was famous. She was the first African-American woman to go into space. 
Jemison retired from NASA in 1993 to pursue some of her other dreams. Jemison has used her fame as a launch pad to bring important issues into public spotlight. She founded an international science camp called The Earth We Share. Students at the international camp work to help solve current global problems by using science and technology. She also started her own company, which seeks to develop technologies that benefit the planet Earth and the people who live on it. Most of all, Jemison is a great example of how important it is to follow your many dreams. May Jemison is living proof that your dreams can literally take you out of this world. Oh yeah, the word international. Um, you hear the word international, the prefix inter means among or between, and of course national is nations or countries. So international is among or between two or more nations. May Jemison is just one of many astronomers who have added to our knowledge and understanding of space and the universe. For thousands of years, humans have been curious about the celestial bodies that lie beyond the Earth. Even now, there are man-made satellites, spacecraft, and even scientists in space performing experiments, gathering information, and taking pictures. As we come to the end of our space journey together, there's still one question, what's next? As we learn more and more about our world, there could be a thrilling discovery waiting around the corner. Will you be the next great scientist to contribute to the work of other scientists who have come before you? Will you become an astronaut and set foot on another planet or the moon? Will you discover a new celestial body, a new galaxy, or a new way of thinking about our world? What's next? It's for you to think about. Why is Mae Jemison famous? First African-American astronaut to travel into space. Very good. And her mission as an astronaut was? Well, she traveled into space on the Space Shuttle Endeavor for eight days, which isn't very long. There's actually some NASA astronauts in space right now. In fact, you can go online and find astronauts that will read you stories from space. I'm going to have to find that link. It's really good. More questions to review. Again, there's a couple questions in the discussions um, from yesterday and today. There's also going to be a final quiz. Not going to be too complicated to do that. You can try taking it several times to give yourself a chance to answer all of them right. That's always a fun way to do it. But again, this is all for your remembering and learning. And I want you to get as much out of this as you can. <laughs> May Jemison had many dreams she wanted to pursue. Think about your interests and passions. What do you want to pursue now or as you get older? Think about that. The word mission. It's a good word. Mission is a special task or person and team sent to do. Think about all the missions that you have in life and the current mission you are on right now just to get to summer vacation. <laughs> okay, this is a good one. I want you to look at the feather and the cap idiom. This just means that basically when you say a feather in your cap, it just means an achievement or something, an accomplishment that you did. Like, for example, going into space would be Mae Jemison's feather in her cap or all the other amazing things she managed to accomplish. And those are even the small things, you know, it can be a feather in your cap. So when you hear that phrase, it's where it comes from. It's pretty cool. Warriors placed feathers in their headgear every time an enemy was defeated in battle. It's pretty, pretty fascinating thought. Okay. Well, that is the conclusion of this lesson. Um, thank you for joining me through space. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.